Okay, welcome everybody to this um, latest uh, seminar, uh, webinar from, from Intech um, regarding sort of an introduction to Microsoft Teams. Um, so we're going to get this started in, in just a second. We're just going to give um, people a little bit more time to join. Um, bit of housekeeping first. If you've got any questions um, throughout this uh, webinar, you've got access to a Q&A feature, um, which you should find in the top right hand side of your screen. So if you've got any questions about anything um, throughout this, please feel free to post uh, questions up there. We've got a team of, of, of moderators um, looking over those questions and they'll answer anything and everything that comes through um, or pass it on to me. So I'll run through um, any sort of pertinent stuff that we're seeing um, towards the towards the end of the, uh, the, the webinar. Um, with regards to introductions, so my name is Mark Armstrong. I'm a technology consultant for Intech Business. I'm joined on the call by Ray Bell, who's the group CTO. And um, the purpose of this really is um, we're going to show you, um, try and show you as much as we can of, uh, of Teams over the next uh, hour or so. So we'll run through a quick a, a demo to kind of show you the art of the possible with it. But we're also going to sort of start by uh, giving you a little bit of context. So showing how um, technology has moved and why teams and collaboration solutions like it are becoming more and more um, relevant within businesses. Obviously, with what's going on at the moment, and they've never probably been more relevant than they are now. Um, we'll give you as much um, context as we can and we'll look to try and solve or give you some answers to some real business uh, problems that, that, that we see day in, day out with our, with our customers. So I think we'll get started. It's, it's, um, we'll give everyone a couple of minutes. If anyone joins late, they can uh, they can always catch up later on. If you miss any of this uh, webinar, if you have to sign off early, then if you re-click on the link that you um, joined today, you can you'll be able to access a full recording of this webinar. Um, so you can watch that in posterity or share it with uh, share it with uh, anyone in your business or anyone you like really, and they can they can. Uh, uh, get a look at this as well. So I'm going to pass over to Ray, who's going to sort of um, give you a little bit more information about about us and about these um, these business problems that we're looking to try and solve today. Um, hi, yes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Ray Bell. Um, as Mark said, I'll just give a little bit of a a brief brief story around around Intech and also positioning really um, Teams as a solution because we'd like to get into the, the demo as quickly as possible. Um, but I guess just from uh, from Intech's point of view as, a, as a, a business, we are very much in the technology solutions space. Um, and for us, that includes everything from telecoms, traditional IT, business applications um, uh, and cloud, cloud solutions, um, including as part of that, helping drive and deliver a technology strategy for, for any business. But I'd say at the heart of all of this is the two words at the bottom of this this deck. Um, obviously, the technology itself is part of it, but the uh, the word beside it is equally important. So from a change perspective, it's really important for us to help understand how the technology will help a business and how it will be adopted. Um, and really, this is how we like to position position teams within that within that context. So um, so we normally start with a little bit of a, a, a a journey or a history of of technology and um, and how it's how it's sort of affected the business so or it affects business um, and we're a part of a journey where all businesses are perhaps a slightly different stage but ultimately if we've been in business for a while we've seen a lot of change not that long ago where you know mass mail and memos were, were were kind of the way that communication was done to customers and internal um, obviously very quickly moved to to email, uh, which seems to have taken over our, our lives and it will continue to evolve. And, and and really what we're going to talk about today is the continuation of that. Now clearly what we're experiencing at the moment and wider, wider society with, um, with COVID-19, et cetera, that's driving change uh, and, and a at a much greater pace because we're forced to, to work differently. Um, but that was a natural journey that a lot of businesses were on, were on anyway. So uh, the first reason therefore is the technology changes. Um, the second reason is, is that we, that we change or or, or the, the things that we do and how we operate and how we work um, change and that's particularly um, I guess relevant in in this sort of subject of consumerization and that's really where you start to see um, things we use in our personal lives starting to evolve or starting to appear in how we do things in our business lives um, not sometimes the same tools you know applications like WhatsApp and Dropbox etc do appear within business albeit not necessarily part of a 
part of a, a, an official IT strategy, but they do appear. Um, and as consumers, we're using these tools um, all of the time. And actually, the way these those tools work and the way they operate um, changes the way we share information, consume content, and talk to each other. And and a good example really is is, is the guess the decline of email within our personal lives. It's usually other applications that we use to communicate. Um, with our friends and families um, and emails sort of slowly but surely uh, disappearing. So um, so what that's the, 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 the actual first message is these these tools are changing what we do. Um, and actually the second message within that is that early adopters have a key role to play here. So as each generation of the workforce comes in, um, these sort of uh, uh, social media type applications are really driving how they operate and and therefore will ultimately start to drive change in business. So so I guess that's the um, the, the, the positioning of, uh, of of what we're talking about today. Um, we're going to address a number of problems in this in this webinar and we're going to break them down into into some different areas. Um, once we've uh, run the demo, we'll just kind of recap on on those on those challenges. So, so the first one is really we've touched on already um, communication. So obviously with the internet and email, it's enabled us to do an awful lot more than we used to be able to do, but actually it's taken over our lives. And one of the reasons that we've we've got that is it's literally dominating everything we do. So we can spend most of our day in front of our, our inbox and actually a lot of the analysis says that that's not the most productive time. Um, and a huge amount of time is wasted as part of part of doing that. And, if, and to understand why that, if you just look a little bit more closely at how email actually actually works and how it's used um, and in a classic scenario with different people, different devices with different roles and responsibilities looking to send each other information by email. It's very much a person to person or one person to a large group and you get into that classic sort of round robin of of um, of reply alls and people jumping onto conversations and not sure whether I should respond or not or adding people into to conversations and they only hear part of it and it's extremely efficient. When you add then documents into that, you've got the additional challenge of lots of versions of documents being passed around. You get people looking at you know old versions of proposals or not quite sure who's got the latest version and ultimately adding lots and lots of storage needs as multiple copies of things are are sort of saved and stored across the business. So fundamentally as a collaboration tool, um, whilst email's got lots of benefits, but as a collaboration tool, it's it can be it can be inefficient how it's used. So so if you sort of turn that on its head a little bit and 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 look at um I know this look at some of the additional challenges inherently within that. So email is a foundation of how we work. Um, ultimately if we're starting to use it for business processes, that creates challenges where um, perhaps you know, the sales process is separate from the commercial sign off process. It's separate to the onboarding process of a customer. Um, and actually the, a lot of those um, uh, approval steps or are actually engaging different people at different stages of the processes can be quite a challenge. There's no flow to a lot of the a lot of the work that happens there. Um, so that's problem number two. And problem number three really is, is, is I've touched on the documents themselves. So we're starting to forward documents by email. Um, create lots of different versions. If you've got documents stored locally on a file server, how do you access them? Um, how do you make sure they're secure? And the documents that aren't meant to be shared to the wider public are, are controlled and managed. And once they're all saved and locked away somewhere, how do we find them? How do we search for them? So so the recap on the three challenges we'll cover off the Teams demo is, is, is firstly, uh, replacement of email. It's got a it's a powerful tool. It's got a role to play. Um, secondly, business processes that could actually be more efficient and effective using Teams, which we'll touch on in the demo. And thirdly, how it really um, helps us with how we manage documents and 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 uh, and, and, uh, and use those as part of business process. Um, as we've mentioned, it's already happening. So actually, uh, a lot of the training isn't necessarily needed for for uh, the, using some of these applications because. People instinctively understand how to use them if they use them in their personal lives. Um, the difference here is that they will be officially part of a, a business uh, technology decision rather than things that have just appeared and people have started to use them uh, because they felt a need for it. Um, so, um, so I would say um, at this point it's probably best to pass over to Mark um, now that we've set some of the scene for this and um, and Mark take us through a bit of a demo and at the end he'll do a quick recap on those sort of three business problem areas we talked about and uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have addressed them. So I shall hand over to Mark to talk about Teams and do the demo. Thanks Ray, appreciate it. Right, um, so yeah Microsoft Teams, I don't know um, with regards to who we've got on the call uh, what your exposure is to Teams or not but um, 
Microsoft Teams was um, was released in March of 2017, and it's been a huge success. Um, it's been Microsoft's most successful ever launch of a product. Um, so it, it, uptake of this has been faster than uptake of Windows, of Office, of anything. Um, and obviously, in recent weeks, the uptake has just um, exploded. Uh, so in the last two weeks, I think they've pretty much doubled their user base. Um, but to, with credit to them, it hasn't crashed. Um, so they're doing all right. Um, and the purpose of Teams really, uh, um, for anyone who's kind of seen it, um, they kind of think, oh, well, it's just kind of WhatsApp for business. It's just a way of sending instant messages. But actually, it's a lot more than that. And what Microsoft are trying to do is, um, is create a sort of a one-stop shop for um, people's work life and try and be able to have everything done within Teams. So that includes um, telephony. It includes text um, chat, so instant messaging, both to individuals and to teams, to groups. It includes um, conferencing, so video and audio conferencing. It includes um, files, uh, so surfacing everyone's files um, through Teams. And it includes um, things like project management, so being able to do uh, task management and, and project management through Teams is really straightforward, uh, along a whole host of, of other features. Um, teams plugs into a lot of different things. Um, and as a result, it should mean that people are having to navigate to a few, far fewer applications um, on the, during their day-to-day, -day, which therefore reduces distractions, reduces downtime, improves efficiency. Um, and it's really all underpinned by the fact that collaboration has, has changed. Um, people collaborate um, far differently now than they would have you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And email really hasn't been able to keep up with that which is why, as, as Ray mentioned, we've seen a massive uh, move away from email as being a sort of a communications tool within personal lives. Uh, people tend to message each other through text message or through uh, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or any number of other platforms. They tend not to message each other through emails. You tend to use email in your personal life to communicate with companies or to receive you know, login details for another for a website or something like that. You tend not to email um, you know, uh, colleague, you know, friends, and that sort of thing through this solution. Um, and so Teams has kind of took that and said, well, if this is working for people's personal lives, why aren't we doing that within business? Um, and how you can collaborate through Teams is very, very different. It encourages what I would consider sort of passive collaboration. So if we take the example um, earlier of email, um, in email, you can't choose who you get an email from. Um, and if you're in an email um, sort of conversation, then you're stuck in that. And you're going to get every message. So if you've been sort of CC'd into an email chain that you have no interest in, tough. Um, you're going to get every email and you're going to get notified every time one of those emails uh, comes in. Um, but equally, um, you can't choose to join a conversation that maybe you would be interested in because you will have no idea that it's going on. Um, so let's say I ask a question of, of someone within my uh, business. And if I've only got email to rely on, then it, invariably I'll email that person. Um, and hopefully they'll come back to me with an answer. Now that's great for me, but it benefits nobody else in my team. And it might be that there are several other colleagues in my team for whom that answer would be useful. They're not gonna see this. The only way they'll see it is if either they ask the same question to the same person, in which case that person might be fielding the same question or five or six, seven, eight, 10, 100 different people. Or I might think, oh, well, I think this is interesting for the rest of my team, so I'll CC them all into this email. And in which case, everybody in my team, of which the vast majority, if not all of them, might not be interested in this question and therefore not interested in the answer, they're now stuck in this email chain. So what Teams does is it centralizes um, communications and everything goes into Teams and then people can kind of choose um, what they interact with, what they collaborate on and what they don't. So when I send a message in Teams, it still gets directed at that particular person so that they get notified and they can then respond in a hopefully a fairly timely manner but everybody else in my team will be able to see that message. They'll be able to see whatever answers or whatever happens within that conversation. And they'll be able to um, participate in that conversation if they so wish. But equally, if they have no interest in it, then that could be the last time they see that conversation. It will never send a notification to them. Um, they'll never get pinged about it, but they'll still have access to it. So it might be that even if this conversation isn't relevant to them today, it might be relevant to them in a week or a month or in six months time or a year and they'll still have access to that through what is a really powerful um, search functionality um, in Teams. So without further ado, before we, um, we go PowerPoint crazy, um, let's have a look at the solution. So I'm gonna load up Teams. I'm, I'm doing this in a browser. 
So um, Teams has got many um, ways of accessing it. You can access it through a browser like I'm doing, and I'm doing this deliberately because I'm already using the Teams application to host this uh, webinar. So this entire webinar is being hosted through Teams. Um, but you can access it through a desktop application, which is always my preferred method. You can access it through any browser, whether that be Edge, Chrome, Safari, take your pick. Um, and you'll get exactly the same experience and exactly the same functionality. Um, you can also access it through a phone so, or, or a tablet. So if you want to download the app onto your handset or onto your iPad or whatever it may be, you can do that. And again, the, the, the look and feel is slightly different on, on mobile, um, but only because it's optimized for smaller screens. But the actual functionality within there is essentially identical. So I've still got access to everything that I have access to um, in the desktop application. So here I am in Teams. Um, so I'm in the Teams section of Teams, and as you can see, I'm a member of several different teams. Uh, and then within these teams, these teams are broken up into what we call channels. And the reason we have channels is it's just creating little subsets um, within the team subsections. So it's just an easy put way for me to be able to get to where I need to get to quickly and start talking about the thing that I'm interested in. So for example, in this X1050 launch team, if there was just one channel, then every time I want to talk about digital assets or the go-to-market plan or blueprint or whatever else, I've got to mention that in the, at the start of my chat. Because if I've only got one channel, how, how are anyone going to know what I'm talking about? But if I have a channel for that, then I don't have to mention that first stage. I can just launch into what I want to do, what I want to say, and everyone's going to know the context. It also means that when I want to access files, I've kind of, these are my like first level file folders, if you like, um, to then go and find what I need to, to find from a, from a file perspective. So if I go to go to market plan, let's say I want to send a message. So it, if I want to target a message at somebody, which 99.9% of the time I will, then all I need to remember to do is at mention them. So press the at sign, then start typing their name in. In this case, I'm going to send a message to Alan. I'm going to say, hi, are you free? And hopefully Alan will respond to me. So I can tell that he's free anyway, because I can see his availability if I hover over him. I can see he's got a little green tick. Um, so one of the great things about Teams is um, you tend to get messages a lot faster because people know that you know that you're actually in front of your in front of your computer in a way that they don't necessarily know on email. Um, it's also far less formal. So you'll notice that I'm not, you know, signing off with regards, Megan. I'm not having to put a long form message in. So it's very quick and easy. People tend to really um, be allergic to doing this on email because it can come across rude, but people absolutely do it through instant messaging on text and stuff now. Um, so as a result, the, the, the whole style of this is really different. There we go, Alan's replied to me. And so now we can start having this conversation. Now, because I at mentioned Alan, he gets a little notification pop up to tell him that I've sent a message and he can then reply to it. Nobody else in this team, this X1050 launch team, will get that notification because I haven't targeted them. But everyone in this team will be able to see this conversation and respond to it if they want. They'll know it's, there's new messages because their channel would have gone bold to indicate that. So they can have a look at this and they might see this and go, oh, that's interesting. Actually, I want to be involved in this. So they could then click reply, send the message, and then they'll then automatically be in this conversation from then that moment on. So once people are in a conversation, you don't have to keep at mentioning them. It will automatically notify anybody who's involved in the conversation. Um, and you'll notice that one of the major advantages of this over, say, WhatsApp, is the fact that these messages are um, blocked together. So as long as we remember to click reply, so I'll just say, just need help on a file. As long as we're replying um, by pressing this button, which sounds obvious, but the amount of people who forget to do that and go here and start a new conversation is um, incredible. Um, then this method, th this whole conversation will be blocked. So there you go, I'll enter thumbs up to say that, yeah, be free. And I can see that in that notification down here. So the advantage of this over WhatsApp is WhatsApp messaging is, in, is pretty much entirely sequential. I know that you can kind of reference our message as a reply to, but that's about it. So if you're in a group with 10 people in WhatsApp and five people are talking about one thing and three people are talking about something else, then unless you're watching that in real time, you're not going to have a clue what's going on if you look at that in an hour because one message might have no relation to the message directly above it or the message directly below it because they might be messages replying to some other conversation further up in that chain. 
In teams, I don't have that problem. Everything's grouped together now and forevermore. So if anyone does a keyword search in the future and that one of those keywords is mentioned in any of part of this conversation, then that whole conversation is going to pop up. So if I'm talking about a customer or a particular person or a particular file or whatever it is, this is going to be referenceable as part of that. Um, so Teams chat isn't just sort of isn't just um, sort of chat for the here and now. This can become a really good repository of information um, for many months and, and potentially years to come in a way that email isn't. Me and Alan have this conversation on email and then you know me and Alan maybe leave the business or even if we don't, no one's got access to that conversation but me and Alan. And if we leave, then no one's got access to it. Because although our inboxes might be saved somewhere you know, on the back of a server, they're never going to get looked at again in reality. While here, this conversation and any useful information in it is always accessible forevermore, irrespective of what happens to, to, to me and, uh, and Alan. So I started this conversation, and the reason I'm doing that is I want Alan to help me on a, partic on a file. Um, I think this is a really good demonstration of kind of what we can do in Teams. So I click the reply button again. Got a whole host of icons down here, so I can do longer form messages, I can put emojis and all that sort of stuff in. But what I'm interested in is this button, the attach button. So I click attach, try that again, it always does that. And I click browse teams and channels because I know that the file that I want is in teams. And then I go and find the file that I want. And in this case, I want um, Alan to help me with, um, let's say this one, this Fabricam 3D printer brochure. So I select that and I click share link. And I go, um, just click here. Whoops. And what I'm doing is I'm sharing a link to this file. So what I'm not done is I haven't attached a copy of this file like I would if I was sending Alan an email. I sent him a link to where the actual file lives in the cloud. So this isn't a version of the file. This isn't a copy of the file. This is the file. So one of the major advantages of having stuff in the cloud is that you can reference it from anywhere because all I'm really referencing is a web address in the same way that if I you know, typed in the BBC website, I'm not moving the BBC website, I'm just creating a link to it. This is exactly what I'm doing here. So now me and Alan from within Teams can click on this link and access this file. And this comes to the second major advantage, not just of Teams, but of files in the cloud. The advantage of Teams is that I can do this from within Teams. I don't have to open up PowerPoint or come out of this and go somewhere else to work on this file. I can do it from directly in Teams. But the major advantage of having files in the cloud is that me and Alan can both access this file at the same time and edit it at the same time. So no more are we going to have that situation where if someone's in a file, it's read only for everybody else. Now it's accessible to everybody who's been given access to it to edit as they wish uh, simultaneously. So now in, it, in the old world, um, it would have been the case that if I was in this, no one else could touch it. I might have to edit this file, then send it to Alan on email, and then he does his thing. I wait for him, he, he sends it back, and all this sort of messing around. Now I don't have that. I can see that Alan's in the document because it tells me here. I can see he's editing slide three. Would, would, wouldn't you know it? I'm in slide three. So I can see that Alan's here and I can see in real time that he's editing this deck. So that might work for me, but I might actually think, well, I still need to interact with Alan. This isn't working. They're just like kind of seeing what he's doing. I want to talk to him. So if I click this conversation button now, it's going to bring me back to the conversation I'd already started. So I could go here, um, change Kelly to Steve, let's say. And that's very lazy of me because obviously it would have been quicker for me to have just done that. But you know, I like bossing Alan around, so that, that works for me. But very quickly, instant messaging again is probably going to get to a point where this is, um, this is cumbersome. So what I can now do is I can start a meeting with Alan directly within this chat. So I'll just try and get rid of that notification. Whoops. Right, we'll go back into the file. Right. So, oh, this is a problem with me having this in full screen but not being able to see it all. So I'm just going to change that to not to full screen. And then I can see my reply options here. So I'm now going to click this little meet now button. I'm not going to give it access to my camera and things. It'll go bananas. But I click this meet now button. I say, let's, um, let's call this file chat, and I press meet now. And now I'm in a meeting. It 
you'll be able to see um, that Alan, Alan in that chat will be able to see that I've started a meeting, so now he can join it. Um, so when he joins it, we'll have full access to video. I've turned my camera off, um, so I have no idea what it's going to do with my bandwidth um, if I am presenting two meetings at once, um, but I could have my camera on. Obviously, I can turn my mic on and off. I can share my screen. So if I wanted to, I could share um, my desktop with him and share everything, or I could share a particular file, a particular window with him. Now, the reason you might want to share a win, if I share my desktop, he sees everything I see on my screen. So if I flip between applications, he'll see that. Now, that may, for more often than not, that's going to be fine. And it probably is the case that I'm going to want to flip between different applications. But if I'm doing a presentation like I am now, or if I'm doing something where I don't really want anyone else to, to see anything but the thing I want to present, then I can just share a window instead. And all that people on the call will be able to see is that window. They won't be able to see anything else. So I can click away from it reply to an email, do what I like, no one on the call um, will be able to see that, they'll only be able to see the window that I'm sharing. Um, if I click on these three dots, I can see some more options that I've got. This is cut down because we're working out of the, um, out of the browser um, through various layers, but there is more that you can do. So from here, I can record the meeting. Um, so it'll record the, uh, this whole meeting in the cloud. Um, so I'll, I'll set that going um, so we can see what that looks like. Um, so it'll record the whole meeting for me. Um, any video, screen share, and all of that stuff will be saved. One of the clever things it will do, uh, first you'll know is that it tells everybody. So it tells everybody that it's being recorded. If someone's joined this audio only, um, which is possible, um, then it'll tell them in their ear that the meeting's being recorded. Um, it, as well as recording the whole meeting, it will automatically transcribe everything that's said in the meeting as well. Um, so what that means is that if I miss a meeting or let's say a customer that I've had this meeting with comes back to me in a month and says, look, we didn't agree to this. I don't know why this has happened or whatever else. Rather than me having to then sort of listen through all the meeting, I can search the transcription for a particular keyword or a particular thing that would have kind of come up if I'd mentioned that particular thing that they're disputing. And it will bring that up in the transcript. And then obviously I've got a, a written um, response but also I can click on that and it will play the point in the meeting that I said those words. And I could you know, send that as a recording um, to, the, to the customer. Um, so really, really useful functionality. Um, some of the options that you can't see here but are available in, in, in Teams um, is live transcription as well. So not just transcription after the event, it can do transcription during an event as well. So convert what people are saying as they're saying it to text. And you might think, well, what's the point in that? But um, once we're all allowed outside of our houses again, um, if you're in a busy location uh, on a laptop joining a conference call and you suddenly think, well, I haven't got any headphones, how I can't listen to this, you know, I'm in a cafe, um, I can't have it blaring out my speakers, then you can come on with all your sound off and just turn on live captioning and you can read the meeting. Um, another feature that's coming out very soon is that it's going to translate those transcriptions into one of any number of languages. So if you're having a call with somebody who doesn't speak English, um, then they can translate what you're saying into their language and you do the same at your end. So it's really powerful stuff that's, um, that's coming through. Um, equally, I can blur the background on my camera um, so that if I'm working from home or if I'm working anywhere where it's kind of messy behind me, I don't want people to see that, then I can blur it so they only see my face. And again, new functionality coming out very soon is going to allow custom backgrounds. So if you wanted a company logo behind you or an office scene or the beach or whatever you like, um, you can have that have that pop up behind you. Um, so Teams meetings, really, really powerful. Um, still got access to my conversation. So if I click my conversation here, here is, it is. So if I think, well, I, I'm, I'm happy talking to Alan, but I don't, I need to be working on my file, then I can just click back on this link and I'm, I'm back into this file. But the conference call hasn't finished. So now we can be talking to each other while we edit this file. Uh, I can also use this now to send them URLs or whatever. So this is all gonna be recorded against the, um, the meeting. Uh, against the chat and therefore against the file. Um, if I wanted to bring someone else into this call, then I can do, I can click here and I can invite people. So I can invite anybody I like um, by typing their name in if they're in my business and they'll pop up. Um, what I can also do is if I know that a Teams user or a Skype user, then I can put their email address in. So if they don't work for my business, they're not gonna pop up here um, unless I put their email address in, but then they will. Um, if they're neither of those things, um, then I can still invite them from here, but I'd have to have a special license, which is called audio conferencing, which is an extra three pounds per user per month. What that will allow me to do is dial them into the call. So I can put a number in here 
and um, and have them join that way. Um, if outside of this, I'll just end this meeting now. If I want to have a meeting with somebody, um, uh, you book a meeting in with somebody and it's an external person. So they're not a Teams user at all. Um, they don't even maybe use Microsoft, maybe they're a Google person, then that's fine. Um, what I can do is from within Outlook, I can create a Teams meeting. If I just drag this across so that you can see it, um, I can send this to whoever I like and all they have to do to join this meeting is just click on that link. Now, that's really powerful because it doesn't, doesn't require any sort of um, Teams access, any sort of Microsoft stuff. It'll just open in a browser and they're straight in. Now, one of the major advantages of this over a lot of the other um, video conferencing solutions, other than the fact Teams is free with Office 365, um, is that this requires no download of anything. So Zoom, WebEx, all those sorts of solutions um, require you to download a client onto your computer so you can join the meeting. That's fine if um, your computer is unlocked for that sort of stuff. But if it's a work computer, that's not often the case. Um, so then it's an extra step for that person to go through to get joined. They have to you know, go to the IT function and say, look, can, can I install Zoom or can I install WebEx or whatever on my computer? Through Teams, you have none of that. They don't, this doesn't install anything. It just opens in a browser. So it means that A, they can join on their work computer, but also means they can join on any computer anywhere in the world and um, have all that same functionality. Um, so there you go. You can click on that link. Again, because I've got this audio conferencing license, it also gives a physical number that people can dial as well. But as I say, there's a, there's a charge for that. That's an extra um, three pound. Uh, per user per month. So there we go. Um, within a simple chat, I've been able to start up a conversation with Alan, um, start working on a file with him. When we come out of that file, it saves automatically. I never have to press save or anything like that. If I want to work out of this file from kind of the full fat version of PowerPoint or Excel or whatever it is, then I can. I can just click on these three dots and I can click on open in the desktop app. Still get all that functionality. If Alan's in it, I'll still be able to see him. I'll still be able to see him change stuff, all that sort of thing just within the desktop version. Um, we can then finish this file. Again, there's only ever one version of the truth. Um, this isn't a file that I've sort of emailed around, so we're thus creating multiple versions of it. This is just the same file. So when me and Alan next access this, we'll be accessing it from the point we last left it, um, both of us. Um, so that's really useful. And version control becomes a heck of a lot easier. And then here is my um, recording of that meeting here, and that's just converting the stream now. So in a second, that will be accessible through Microsoft Stream, which is kind of Microsoft's business version of YouTube, um, that, so that I can access that recording. So what this means is that, yeah, we've been able to do our thing, me and Alan, which has been great, you know, work on a file and get that to where it needs to be. Everyone else can access this chat and see what we did. Everyone else can access this file and use it for whatever they want to. Um, and equally, this is going to pop up. If anyone ever searches for this um, Fabricam, again, this chat is going to pop up as part of that. So they can see this file, but they can also see what we did to um, update it. And if they if they so wish, they could look look you know listen in our meeting and say, all right, well that's why they made that decision to do this, or that's why they did that, or whatever else. So really powerful. And at no point have I had to come out of Teams, which I'm running out of a browser, to do um, any of this. So really powerful stuff. Um, with regards to chat, um, as well as being able to chat to individuals through um, through Teams, you can at mention multiple people. So if I wanted to mention Alan and uh, and someone else, uh, let's say Diego, then I can do that, and that will send an instant message to both of them. If I want, I can at mention the team. So if I do at team, it will notify everybody in the team. But I really that this is something that a lot of companies that have started out on Teams use a lot. But I don't like the at team. For me, the app team is no different to uh, CCing everyone into an email. Um, it's going to hit a lot of people who don't care, but then they're going to get the notifications and they're not really interested in that. So a better one for me is app channel. If I do app channel and, and type a message, that will message, that will notify everybody who follows the channel. So you'll notice here that I've got several channels that I can see and I've got channels that are hidden. The ones that I can see, I will get a notification for if someone app channels. I won't be a notification for the ones that I've hidden. So I find at channel much more relevant because if you're following the channel, you probably should be interested in the messages coming through from it. Therefore, an at channel mention is, is kind of um, use, is, 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 is a viable solution. Um, other, an at team, I don't think is very often because you don't want to get an at team about a thing in go to market plan if you have no interest in the go to market plan as that stream is now uploaded. Um, so app channel, really, really useful um, feature. 
if I do want to talk to someone one on one, then I still can. Now, one of the things that you've kind of got to get your head around is the fact that it's much better to try and do every all your conversations through Teams. Even if you don't think that conversation is super relevant, it might be. It might be now, it might be in the future. So try and keep everything as public as, as you can. But there's absolutely going to be a need to send one to one chat or one to several chat outside of Teams. So I can do that. So I've got my chat function here. If I want to talk to Alan, I can click new chat here. I can type Alan in. Whoops. And now me and him can have a conversation here. And this is private to us and it's, um, it's, con it's saved. So if me and Alan have ever had a conversation in the past, so here is, for example, it's a great conversation I had with Adele, um, then that's saved. One of the things that if anyone, if any of you have used Skype in the past, all Skype's previous conversations used to save in Outlook, which is really annoying. Um, this doesn't do that. It's all saved in here. And again, if I now want to call Alan or video call him, um, I can do it from these buttons here. If I was out the desktop app, I could also just directly share my screen with him without having to call him. Um, so I can do that. Now, let's say me and Alan are talking, then we decide, actually, I want to bring someone else into this conversation. Then I can, I can click this little button up here and I can add someone else. So if I add Diego, and now we're at three. Now what you'll notice is that mine and Alan's conversation hasn't followed us because that's private. Don't, no, don't necessarily want Diego to be able to see that. But now if I send a message, Alan and Diego will get a notification. If I click these buttons, they'll all get called, they'll all get video called. Um, I can also create groups. So it, you see here, I, I named a group management and then I put several people in it. And I can do that um, with, any, with any group. Um, so I might want to do this with Alan and, uh, and Diego. I could call this group something. Um, or I might want to create a brand new group off the bat instead of creating a team. Um, Teams uh, has full access to my Outlook calendar. So if I click on my calendar here, it's going to pull through everything um, that's in my Outlook calendar, whether it's a team meeting or not. Um, this makes booking meetings far easier. And I can book meetings directly in Teams if I so wish. Um, so I click the new meeting icon and same sort of experience as an Outlook. Now, personally, I don't use this very often because I tend to set up a lot of meetings with external people. And this will not remember external people's email addresses. It's only people who are in my contacts. So I pretty much just everyone in the business. Um, so I generally use Outlook to book all of my Teams meetings, but you can absolutely do it from here. One of the clever things that Outlook has, as does um, Teams, is scheduling assistance. So it will, it will look at our diaries, mine, Alan's and Adele's, and it's suggesting me times that were free. Definitely not doing that one. And so we can, that's really useful. Outlook does that as well. Thoroughly recommend you have a look at it. Um, we'll close that down. As I mentioned, um, Teams has a full calling um, suite as well. So again, this is an additional cost, but um, you can get this as a license and then it gives you full calling. So at the moment, I can call anyone on Teams, um, whether they be internal or external people. If they use Teams or they use Skype, I can call them for free through this. Um, but with the conferencing, with the, um, with the phone license, it gives me a physical number and I can have that any geography I want. So I can have an 0161 number or whatever it may be um, that anyone can call and it will ring my teams. Um, they don't know they're calling teams. They just think they're calling an 0161 number, but it comes through to my teams. Massive advantage of that, teams can follow me because I can have it installed on my phone. So anyone can call my 0161 number at any time and I'm always going to be able to answer it, um, whether I'm in front of my computer or not. And the calling solution is, has all the functionality of a, 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 a kind of standard telephony solution. So it's got hunt groups and um, uh, auto attendance and all of that sort of stuff. I can forward calls to people. Everything that I can do in a normal sort of telephony solution, I can, I can do within Teams, but it's a really um, cost-effective uh, solution. Um, the final thing I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon is how we can find a breakup, um, how channels can be broken up. So um, by default, if I'm in a team or anyone in a team has access to everything in that team. So all of the channels, all of the files and all of the channels, everything. But you can change that. Um, two ways to change it. You can physically, you can change the settings of the files themselves individually or by groups. So you might say, right, well, I want all of these people to be able to access this file, but only as view only. I only want these two people to edit it. You can do all that sort of stuff. Um, what you can also do is you can limit people's access to channels as well by creating private channels. So if it's a, not a private channel, I've got access to all of them. 
but I could create a private channel and I could say, well, for this channel, only three of the 10 that are in this team can access that. So I can do that, that channel won't show up for those people and they certainly won't be able to access it or see what's going on in it. So that negates the need often to create new teams. It used to be the case that you couldn't do this. You were either in the team and you had everything or you weren't in the team and you had nothing. Um, with um, private, so it, what, if you wanted to create, say, a management channel within an existing team, you couldn't, well, you could, but the whole team would be able to see into it. Um, so instead, you'd have to create a new team called management and only add the management people to it. With private channels, it kind of negates a lot of that need because you can just create the private channel, just put the management team into that, and they're the only people that can access it. So a, a top tip um, when you're creating your team's environment is as much as possible, try and minimize the amount of teams that you create, but instead maximize the amount of channels within those teams. So always think when you're about to create a new team, think, well, do I need this new team or would it actually be better served just having a, a channel within one of the existing teams? It's always really useful to try and minimize the amount of teams you, you create, because more often than not, you don't need to do it. Um, I can invite um, anyone in the business to a team if I'm an owner of a team. So if I'm an owner, I'm the person who created it or have been given that, given that responsibility. If I'm not an owner, I can't invite or remove anyone from the team. Um, and I can also invite uh, what we call guests. So guests are external people um, from anywhere. All, all I need is their email address. They don't have to be a Microsoft or a Teams user or anything. All that will happen is um, they'll get an email, they click on it and they're in. Um, because we've invited them into our environment. So I can have guests in here, but again, same thing with guests as in with everybody else in the team. If you're a guest in a team, you have access to everything unless stated otherwise. So by all means, you know, invite third parties into your teams, but just be aware of that. Be careful how you do it. Um, so in a channel itself, I've by default got three tabs. First tab is posts, which we've, we've gone through in a little bit of detail. Second tab is files. So this is where all my files live for this particular channel. These all live in SharePoint, which is kind of like Microsoft's cloud network drive. I can organize this any way I want. I can have a million and one folders and files and all that, same as on a server. Um, and then the third um, tab I've got is uh, Wiki. Um, and the Wiki is kind of a free form, uh, anything really. Essentially, it, it can be a guidebook, an FAQ, a handbook, whatever it is. Um, so a lot of businesses use this to kind of put um, kind of processes, write them down and have them in a single place. So if I work in a finance uh, team, for example, I might have a wiki that just details certain processes that we do within finance. So, you know, how to process payroll, how to raise an invoice, how to um, generate a PO, uh, whatever it might be. Um, we could have it in here and people can add to it as, as they go along and we create a really useful repository that's completely searchable. Um, for our team to use. Um, so that's Wiki. If you don't want Wiki, you can get rid of it. These two you can't get rid of. This one you can, you can just remove it. Now, as well as that, I can then further customize my channel. So I can click on this plus sign and I can add um, new stuff to it. So I can add um, lots of Microsoft focused tabs. So a tab for Word or Excel or PowerPoint will create a shortcut to a particular folder or a particular file. So if I use a file a lot, um, in this particular channel, I might think, right, well, I'm going to surface this as a, as a tab to make it easier to access. So if I do that, if I click PowerPoint and I go and highlight that folder, that, that, um, that file that we were editing earlier, then there it is now as a tab. Click on that tab straight into the file and I can work on it from here. As well as that, I can link into other applications in Office 365. So Planner, which is a task management application, I can create a team version of that. If I add that, it'll create a, a plan that all the teams in. Uh, OneNote, if I create that, it'll, team, it'll create a notebook that the whole team has access to to put notes in. Um, and as you can see, there are then a whole host of third party applications that I can also uh, link um, directly into Teams. So, and this is growing every day, um, but it means that within my little, within my team and within the channels within that, I could potentially not have really have to come out of this um, to do much um, because one way or another I can link to it. If it's not an application directly in here, but it is a cloud app, for example, I can always just link to the website where that cloud app lives and it will sign me in once I've signed in once uh, every time. Um, so lots of opportunity to kind of do everything you want in here. Um, the final, final thing that we'll kind of demonstrate 
um, so I realize we're running short on time, is what happens to email? Um, so Teams is an internal email killer. Um, what we tend to find is, well, the, the stats bear out that companies or organizations that have used Teams for about three months um, see a drop off of about 80% in, of internal email because people find this much easier, much quicker, so therefore they use it. Um, and they don't send each other emails anymore. Really, really useful. Um, and so far less time wasted. Um, but your customers, your clients, whoever you work with, they are going to keep sending you emails. Uh, there's no doubt about that. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, but that doesn't mean um, that you have to push out of Teams. Um, those emails will come through to you. And if, obviously, if you just need to reply directly to a customer, um, you can do. You can, uh, you can do that on email. But let's say I received an email from um, a customer and I want help on it um, from someone in the business. Um, then what I would do at the moment, pre-Teams would be I'd click forward and I'd send it to them. But now we can surface those emails in Teams. So you'll see here, I got a, a, just a, a, a dummy email. I sent it into Teams and now I can start that conversation from within Teams, in this case with Christy. And we can now, from this email, continue to work in Teams and therefore collaborate with the wider um, team as opposed to then having this as an email conversation between just me and Christy and I. Again, really useful because it might be that there's something in here, customer complaining or something else um, that everyone now can see that that happened, can search for it in the future and, and get a nice sort of rounded view of what's going on. Um, lots of companies use this as kind of like a ticketing system um, in the sense they can put a little reference number against the email when it pops into Teams and then they can solve the problem in Teams. If this file, if this email had any attachments, those would be saved in my file section. Um, so you can see there's a little email section here. So the attachments would be there and there is an actual copy of the actual email address, the e email itself. So whether it be me or anybody else can reply to this original email by just clicking on download original email and then click and reply. So you can get back and forward between Outlook and Teams um, really easily. And that's something that Microsoft are working a lot on at the moment to improve that functionality. The it's not, it's not amazing, it's good, but it's not fully connected at the moment. I think if we're looking at this in sort of three, six months time, it'll be much better. The integration will be that much better, but it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely doable. Uh, so if we go back to our, um, our PowerPoint, whoops, let's flip that. And we look at the problems. So there are three problems that we wanted to solve. And hopefully we have um, communication. So we've taken email out of the equation and we've pushed all of our internal comms in the teams. Therefore, it's centralized. Um, there's far less notifications for everyone to have to deal with. You're only seeing the stuff that's relevant to you or interacting with the stuff that you care about. And you don't have to be involved in the stuff that you're not interested in or is not relevant to you. So the amount of notifications that you're going to be getting is going to be far reduced because those messages are going to be a lot more targeted than they were before. Therefore, we've massively reduced our wasted time from a comms perspective, but we've also reduced our wasted time on a load of other stuff. No longer am I having to send a file to someone and wait for them to edit it before they send it back to me. Um, we can edit it at the same time, um, different parts of the file, and therefore complete it a lot quicker. Um, we can manage approval processes and automate a whole host of things using Teams and the wider Office 365 environment something called Power Automate within, um, within Office 365 that allows us to automate a load of processes. Um, and then document management, again, we've really solved that problem. Um, no more VPNs. I can access my files on anything within internet connection and I can work on them. Um, I don't have to worry about the technical setup. All I need is to log in. Um, and from a security standpoint, we can make that really secure, whether that be something simple like um, supplementing a password with um, multi-factor authentication to all sorts of complicated stuff that can be fully configured to make sure that you're safe and the knowledge that your data isn't going anywhere. Um, and Office does a whole load of other stuff with files in the cloud, um, saving multiple um, versions. So every time someone changes the file, it saves the old version uh, kind of hidden away. So if anyone needs to access that again, they can do. Um, but overall, making document management a lot quicker and much easier to, to search and work with moving forward. So hopefully we've answered those questions. So finally, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look across at what's been going on in the Q&A. And um, 
and try and answer any questions that I've got. So if anyone's, do I see any questions in here that haven't been answered? No, we're all good. So I think. Um, so if Mark, anyone's got any questions, yeah. Sorry, Mark, just to jump in there. So I think there was there was a question just around um, someone with a potential issue of adding an external person um, to Teams using their email address. And as you've discussed, that is possible to do, but perhaps might be a local issue with that that person set up or administration. Um, yeah. So um, so yeah, out of the box. Uh, it, that feature is generally switched off, so it would have to be switched on by someone with access to it um, to to allow you to. But it's it's literally uh, you know two clicks and it's done. And once that's done, yes, it's sim it absolutely is just a matter of putting that person's email address in the Teams, um, and it will work. And it's, it's something that for anybody still on the call, this if if there's any particular things about your setup you need some assistance with, then just get in touch with us afterwards, and we can help you on a sort of a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, if um if this has sort of sparked anything in your mind, and you kind of think, right, this is really useful, but we're going to need more help, then absolutely, you know, that's what we're here to do. Um, you know, we can help you both around Teams, but also around the general sort of technology. Um, Teams is kind of um, one layer in multiple layers just within Office 365, never, never, not even thinking about the rest of IT. And this is what we can help um, businesses do is kind of making the most of technology, helping optimize processes, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, absolutely, if you've got any questions um, that sort of occur to you after this, um, after this webinar, please, please do get in touch with us and we're more than, more than happy to help. Um, Mark, and yeah. One, one final one, sorry, I think just uh, we covered off most of the other questions, but I'd left one to the end for CM if it's still on the call, just missed the um, how to do a conference call um, uh, setup piece. So uh, if, you, if you could just recap on that, just as a final. Yeah, one. yeah, absolutely. So um, the easiest way to do a conference call um, is to set it up as a meeting in Outlook, I think. Uh, so if I, um, if I drag my Outlook across, so you can see that here, and go to new items and as long as I've installed Teams then when it works when I click on new items I'll have an option at the bottom called Teams meeting so I click on that that generates the Teams meeting I then call it whatever so I'll call it conference call I add whoever I want the advantage of doing this in Outlook as opposed to doing it in Teams is that it'll remember any external people as well um, set it for whatever time I want and click send and that is it and then for that conference call, if people want to join it, they either click on this link and it don't install anything, doesn't matter, they can join it through a web browser. Or if they're joining it from their phone, um, they could still they could install the app if they wanted. But if they didn't, if they just wanted to dial in, then with the audio conferencing license, which is an extra three pound, um, they can call this number and, and dial in with using this conference code. Um, and three pound a month is far cheaper than most um, conference calling solutions. Um, if they're not in the UK, um, then they can click on this little local numbers link and it will give them numbers for uh, pretty much any country you can think of so that it's always going to be um, an inexpensive, if not free call for them, as opposed to them always having to call a, um, a UK number. OK, right. Um, well, that is our time. It's pretty much up. I'm not seeing any more questions flying through. Um, so yeah, I think at this point I will we'll call it a day. Um, if you've got as if if anything occurs to you after after this um, webinar, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. You can see our website um, down here. Um, equally, if um, if you want to watch the webinar again, then just click on the link that you you clicked on today, and there'll be a recording of everything that's um, that's been said, and you can view it at your leisure. And with that, I'll um, oh hang on last minute. Oh, thanks, Sam. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So um, with that, I'll um, I'll sign off. Thanks very much.